the key is to be very original it's fine to be inspired it's fine to get ideas from these brilliant artists out there and there's so so many ways to to see and um, find designs and ideas out there but be inspired but add your originality to it Hey there, I'm Maida Leon and my mission is to help creatives like you translate what you love to do into a highly profitable income. I'm a mom of three who began as a lettering artist and grew it into a six-figure business. If I made it possible, so can you. Every week, we'll dive deep into topics like building your confidence, getting comfortable talking about money, and nurturing your passion while juggling life and family. So if you're an ambitious creative who wants to craft the life you love, get cozy, feel at home and listen to the Confident Creator show. My guest today is a brilliant artist. She makes typographic illustrations with paper using a style mainly called quilling and paper sculpting. A true master in her technique, the Mumbai-based artist has specialized in using only paper and glue, making layers, strips, and patterns to create intricate, colorful, and playful three-dimensional works that have been commissioned by the likes of Instagram, Google, Adobe, Disney Publishing Worldwide, to name a few. The works are all handmade by playing with organic forms of the material and a vibrant color palette to make pieces stand out for their complexity and delicacy. She's most often inspired by natural elements and textures which regularly makes an appearance in her work. Welcome to the show, Sabina Karnik. Hello! Hello, thank you for having me. Yes, I'm so thrilled to have you on the show. You know, I have been following you for years. <laughs> wow, thank so you so much. It is really, really fun to have you in here. And, you know, you have you be, uh, being here gracing the show. And I know that you are a well-known creative, uh, well-known in the creative community, specifically because of your unique creations. And so many people look up to you, especially in the world of quilling and paper sculpting. But... For the sake of those who might not know about you yet, would you mind telling us how your creative journey started and why did you choose to specialize in paper quilling? Uh, Thank you so much for the introduction. Um, My creative journey actually started a long, long time ago, ever since I was a child. I've always been into art and crafting things. Um, So naturally, the progression was to enter Uh, a creative field. So I decided to do applied art, applied art and graphic design, which was like a very vigorous five-year course in Mumbai. And um, by the end of my final year, I knew I wanted to major in typography because I was always inclined into lettering, calligraphy, creating types. And um, so that was my majoring subject. Also, I specialized in um, my final year campaign I specialized in creating sculptures with paper. So I kind of realized that I love these two things a lot. I love letters and I love paper. But at that time, I had no clue what I could do with it together. So I was pursuing these two um, parallel fields in their own way. Like I was a graphic designer creating logos, um, uh, basically brand identity for companies, basically software work, like computer work. And on the other hand, I used to pursue crafts, like personal projects, which I was doing. Um, This went on for quite a while. It was not until 2009 or 2010 that I had this idea that maybe I can just start creating letters and alphabets using paper just for for my passion Mm -hmm. to add to my portfolio or just as a side project and it was a fun thing which I enjoyed doing and I started taking pictures of it and uploading it on the internet and I hadn't even completed the the entire A to Z when somebody happened to see it and it happened to be an advertising agency and um, they contacted me and um, asked me can I create something for a jewelry brand in India And I was just like shocked because it was quite a big uh, jewelry brand. So I said, yes, of course. And that was my first um, commissioned uh, project, 
with paper art, creating paper typography. And um, after that, of course, it took a while for um, to set the ball rolling and to, to get constant projects. But it took me about a couple of years to realize that this is something I could pursue because I started getting a lot of commissioned and commission inquiries and uh, people wanting to wanting me to create stuff for their brand. Um, so it was not planned, honestly. It was um, it, it, it just happened. I mean, um, I guess it it somehow clicked the idea of. Um, creating letters in and in a different medium using paper because as we know the letters and typography is everywhere communication is everywhere but when you see something as simple as paper being used being utilized to such an extent to kind of express it in a very new and different way uh, I think it's a very novel and a unique thing so maybe that's what has clicked maybe so that's that's how it it all took off and ever since it's been about 10 years now wow um, that i'm that i'm in this uh, field professionally pursuing it um it's i wouldn't say it's been all wow <laughs> and all great i mean there are times when it's frustrating and um, it's hard because it's paper after all mm-hmm. and um, it's it's not Although it's it's a very simple medium, but it's a very difficult medium to work with as well. Um, but it's been an incredible um, learning experience and a wonderful journey. Yes. Say that. Yeah. So that is why, like, I felt like I have been following you forever because it started like ten years ago, and you mentioned about. 2010 or something like I was just starting my Instagram journey (laughs) right that time so I was I think that time I was only uh, beginning my scrapbook design business online right so it was it was a long time already wow and I have met a couple of grillers during that time Uh, both on Instagram and Facebook, and they were doing so many amazing jobs. So when I first saw your creations and there were letters, I was like, lettering in paper? Wow. (laughs) That is, I think that's also (laughs) one of the unique factor of your creations because it's a combination of your two passions and that has caught up the attention of a lot of people and uh, advertisers. Yeah, I think so. So amazing job. But... Thank you. You know, you fun, funny you mentioned that you did not plan on it. Like it just happened so naturally. And it was the same thing for me with hand lettering. So uh-huh. sometimes people try to push it so much, right? What do you think? Do you have any special like um, uh, a tip or something for people who are pushing it so hard, like trying so hard to get like, get in it faster, get on their journey a lot faster and make it faster than everyone else. You have (laughs) something, maybe advice like you can give them right now while we are still in the topic of that. Um, Took you quite a while and you did not plan on it. (laughs) Neither did I, (laughs) but it all just sort of came together organically because we were just enjoying the process, right? So my tip has always been enjoy the process, play with it, experiment, don't mind the analytics, don't mind the algorithm, don't mind anyone else. What about you? What do you often say to people? Um, I tell them to be extremely patient and there's no shortcut. Honestly, um, if uh, if you're trying to make it um, through your social media, it's a little difficult because it takes time. Um, it's very important to to really um, figure out what it is you're good at, like, and make yourself the best at it. And most importantly, not try to be like someone else because you don't want many people of the same kind. You want all individualistic, unique people who are creating things which are so different. So. Um, the key is to be very original. Mm-hmm. It's fine to be inspired. It's fine to get ideas from these brilliant artists out there. I mean, there's so, so many ways to, to see and um, find designs and ideas out there. But be inspired, but add your originality to it. 
and don't do it quickly don't i mean it's not going to happen fast i mean it's it's just happening but honestly you're not going to realize how the time went by because when you're enjoying the process you don't really feel how long it's taking mm-hmm. yes as long as you're enjoying the journey yes because every day you're learning things you're uh, with, with the ups and downs you're constantly growing and bettering yourself and in the meantime you might have been figure out a different skill which you can add to what you're doing yes so just have a ton of patience and um, don't give up like if you believe what you're doing is 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 really special um don't give up um let it take its time it might happen tomorrow it might happen in a few years or it may take longer but yes. um and more than that um also pursue things you like like if if it's, if you believe in a certain project and if you have not if you have not been hired by anyone to do it but you really want to do it just do it create something unique and make a website um put stuff up on your website because the internet is everything these days yes um you just don't know who's going to see it and who's going to like what you've done so just create stuff even if you're not getting paid work or you're getting small jobs if you're doing private commissions that's fine because i did that too and i still do it now when i don't have bigger assignments mm-hmm. at hand especially in the last year do smaller projects for people charge a little less it's fine but eventually you'll get there so keep doing it you know don't stop don't be disheartened it's it's all a part of uh reaching your destination and you're just going to keep going forward after that yes and the funny thing is they all take things too seriously like you know you have to enjoy the process like i said you have to try different things and i know it can be i don't know maybe this is something that not everyone will agree but when i was uh, before i transitioned from hand lettering from scrapbooking I tried so many different things. I was a surface pattern designer. <laughs> and then I tried um, brush scripting. I tried uh, calligraphy. <laughs> and it wow. hated me. It didn't like me. So I eventually went back to the very thing that I loved. So even if I tried all of those things, I even tried watercolor and lettering. did not like it. So... you will have to discover the thing that is unique to you and the funny thing is even yes. if i already discovered hand lettering i know that there are so many bri- brilliant hand lettering artists out there that i can i'm no match <laughs> with you know they are amazing they're brilliant and at the time i was having this self doubt and i don't know maybe judging myself i keep on judging myself so the thing that i did was i unfollowed all of them for 7 months just to focus yes. on myself work on myself hone my skills whether it's lettering i don't know if i can add another unique um approach to it but eventually my surface pattern design um background um came about so i enjoyed adding embellishments to my letters adding mm-hmm. patterns to the letters and that has become the very thing that made my work unique in the eyes of um yes. companies mostly um publishing co- companies so my work yes. are mostly in book covers and mm-hmm. book inserts so those are my projects wow. and that's lovely yeah mine took quite fast actually because i started in 20 oh, what was that i started instagram 2012 i started hand lettering in uh late 2014 early 2015 something like that 2015 okay. i think it's 2015 because my my son mm-hmm. is already um 2 years old by the time that i um fully dived into it and then okay. i was posting alphabet every every day for 6 <laughs> months and then somebody just saw what i was posting and they hired me to do an alphabet coloring book which was which started all of it And then wow. I shared all of the process. It was it because Instagram in 2012 it was like kind of the boom when everybody mm-hmm. else is booming on Instagram. So it was really fast uh-huh. for me. Mm-hmm. But it probably will not happen if I was not sharing content. So you are right yes. when you said 
uh, build a portfolio, build a website if you have to, and share your work with the world. Because if you don't, nobody will see you. <laughs> and like yes. the older times, people look up to Yellow Pages to look for a plumber or a service provider or something. Nowadays, it doesn't happen anymore. People go online and they'll see everything. So you have to yes. f- fight for people's attention. Absolutely. And it's very competitive. So um, I-, I won't get into the competition part. But yeah, please have a portfolio. Um, social media is also very helpful um, as long as it's healthy and it doesn't bother you. Um, as long as it doesn't affect you. I mean, seeing others work and all of that. But uh, it's an easy way to reach people these days. Mm-hmm. So um Create stuff which you can share. Um, let people see it. Yes. That's the most important thing which I have learned um, because I myself didn't want to do it. And I'm, I'm, I've been very bad at marketing myself and putting out my work for people to see. I was always thinking, how can I show off my work? It's not right because that's not the kind of person I am. But This is the only way to market yourself these days. You have to do it on your own. Mm -hmm. And social media, your handle is your page for advertising yourself. You have to see it that way. Your best qualities when it comes to your work have to be showcased on it. Mm -hmm. So let people see your skills. Let them know via social media or via your portfolio or via your blog. Um, You have to show off. (laughs) Yes, to people exactly. So if everybody else is seeking this, what is the secret to getting more clients? That is the secret. Show your work to the world. There's nothing else. <laughs> you just have yeah, to I be. Mean, you if, Even if uh, no matter how introverted you are, like yes. I am um, an extreme introvert, introvert, but when it comes to <laughs> social media and creating things, um, try and push yourself. I mean, don't overdo it. Don't go crazy. But <laughs> just... Um, <laughs> Because that can happen too. You can get carried away. So um, just create work which you can publish. And uh, you you will reach the right kind of people. Who knows? So And you might get lucky. So just keep trying to do that and it will happen. Yes, you'll never know who's looking at your work. Right? Yeah. That is so, so yes. true. Now, I am super curious and have been longing to ask you this. Even yeah. when I when I don't did not have a podcast yet, I just don't <laughs> try to ask you on DMs because I'm so shy asking it on DMs. But I told you I have seen your work and have followed you for years and years, and I'm only always amazed by the amount of work that you do. But I'm curious, how do you store your creative pieces? Do you have a warehouse or something that you store your pieces? Because the oh, whole paper that's... is tangible. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, um, that's a bit of a challenge. I don't have a warehouse. I have a very small studio working space. And that's where I create all the pieces which the clients don't end up taking. Mm-hmm. I mean, what I mean is um, I create client work. Uh, most of the time, the client purchases the original piece as well, along with the image. Um, but sometimes they don't purchase the original work. And I have to keep them with me. I make boxes. Um, there are like hundreds of boxes full of different wow. projects that I've done. Um, I, I have to dehumidify them. I have to ensure there's less moisture. Uh, it's a little tricky working with paper because paper is very sensitive to mm-hmm, the weather. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's as simple as that. I just make boxes and store them. Wow, that is amazing. I cannot even store my books properly. <laughs> so I can imagine storing hundreds and of pieces of, uh, you know, intricate and delicate projects such as your work. Oh my goodness, if I'm the client, I probably would have to purchase it <laughs> just so I can have it. <laughs> they are super, super amazing. And I know I have listened to one of your interviews before where you talked about it, but I definitely forgot how you did it. So I said, oh, I am going to ask her definitely when she gets on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Has it been difficult, like keeping all of the, uh, the supplies also? Because there's a lot of them for sure. So how do you go about your process, if I may ask? How do you go about your process? How do you prepare for a client project and something how, from, you know, from start and from finishing it? Um, 
it's not it's not difficult i mean i just need a little bit of space and honestly i i don't have a lot i have a very small working space i just have a lot of supplies of paper um which is stored very safely uh how it starts is um i get um, an email or um, a call or whatever it is with the brief and um depending on the information that i have i start creating sketches like it's, it's a couple of sketches like three to four of them which are exchanged with the client just mm-hmm. pencil roughs you know nothing to uh nothing to meet and um once that's sent across they they choose the one that they like one or two of them i combine uh a couple of them which they like and then i if they want i make a color rough with color pencils or paints or just sketch pens and um i need to know once it's approved how big it's going to be how the size is going to be obviously so everything is created to the specification that the client wants if it's going to be on the cover of a book or if it's going to be inside in an article or it's going to be blown up into a very large size depending on that i make it proportionately small obviously yeah <laughs> if it's going to be a billboard it has to be proportionately smaller and then um see everything is finalized in advance because once i create it with paper and once it's glued down it's difficult to make changes it's not impossible but it becomes very difficult to take stuff out and to kind of take stuff apart and then create create it again so um once approvals are done and when i start the final piece it takes about one week to 10 days to um finish the final product um and then i photograph it with really good light um with a really good camera very high resolution image is provided to the client so it's not very difficult not very complicated but yeah it's the only thing is the papers i need to have all the colors that i need i need to have the right yeah, supplies i can imagine um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm always looking out for the right kind of um, texture, the right kind of weight, the thickness, the colors, all of that. So I have a ton of a ton of papers. <laughs> wow! Really, a lot of them with me. What was your biggest client so far? Um, biggest in terms of of the project that I created, the size or like um. Uh, You know, in terms of terms um of, income like yeah the most beneficial uh, project income. for you the most beneficial um it's it was a beauty um beauty store in the US it's called Alta Beauty um they have like a chain of 250 wow. stores all over the states so that was a big project that it went on for about 3 to 4 months I had to create um artwork which is going to go inside their store uh it was going to go on a TV commercial um on the packaging it was for the holiday season you know oh, so there was a lot of it was christmas it was snowflakes and a lot of reds and greens and plus it's a beauty store so there was a lot of femininity in it as well so um that was a very very exciting um wonderful project which was monetarily very big but also very satisfying because the client was very happy that's also very important yes and in terms of uh the workload it's also big <laughs> yes it's big i mean and you don't have to worry about about work coming in for a few months which yes. is which is a big thing off for your mind you know <laughs> exactly you know that yeah. was, that was oh, that was actually my strategy with my hand lettering I took on only a very few clients and some of them I do projects for four months, three months, that long. Yes. Because they know that I have yeah. a child with special needs and I can I cannot finish project like super quickly as other hand lettering artists and they were fine with it. So sometimes I'd work on a book, sometimes just the cover, sometimes book plus the inserts inside <laughs> and yeah. they were fine with it. and you will have mm-hmm. income for 2 3 months which is pretty awesome because you don't have to market yourself out there and when something else comes in you can just you know put it on the pipeline and schedule yes. like 
Hey, Very by true. the way, do you do that as well? Scheduling people or who have projects in the pipeline so you don't end up like having an empty uh, bank account after the previous project? Um, yeah, it depends. I mean, um, there are times when there are too many projects at one time. That's something I, I find very difficult to do because with this kind of work, uh, with like how I create with paper, it's mm-hmm. hard for me to work on more than one or two at the most simultaneously um, because it's time. Time consuming, consuming yes. Since I take um, as against somebody who's creating stuff on Illustrator or digitally um, creating something which would take maybe a couple of days at the most, I take like 10 to 15 days sometimes. So I can't keep saying yes to a lot of people. Um, so there are times when there's too much and there are times when I have to really space it out and I hope the client is willing to wait. And that's like something I'm always worried about, that there should be enough time for me to complete a project. But generally what happens is with advertising and publishing, they have very tight deadlines. Yeah. <laughs> they don't give you a lot of time. Yes, so, I can imagine. Do you work on your own or do you have a team that helps you like with the process on your own? Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's just me. <laughs> I work alone it's too, but... you. I, I'm doing hand lettering, pen, paper, digitize it. And it takes me three, four months. You are doing everything on pen and paper and then pen and paper, like glue and stuff. Your designs are designed using the pencil, but eventually you're going to bring it to life using pen, paper, and uh, sorry, paper and glue. Yes. Uh, I can't complain. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even I can't complain, although there are days when I really, really wish I had an assistant or somebody to help me out. But um, it's tricky because it's a skill, you know, which it's difficult to teach. I mean, unless, I mean, it depends how the the paper is handled. Um, There are a lot of issues uh, at play over here. And it's not something I can train someone to do. There has to be someone who is equally interested and equally passionate as me to do it. And it's it's a task to go around looking for someone (laughs) like that. I'm not going to do it. I mean, then I would rather do everything myself. Yeah. It's it's tough. I think that is one of the common problems for us creatives, hiring hiring fellow creatives. Because I myself, when I try to hire people who will do my graphic design work, and we were, actually, I was talking with uh, Scotty before about this as well. That is our common, (laughs) like, uh, I don't know. We cannot hire people to do graphic design work because we do those kind of work. And then we're not, we usually, we don't end up being happy with the kind of work that we get and we get frustrated. So we try and do it all by ourselves. And we end yes. up exa- getting exhausted all the time. Right? <laughs> I know. And there is a lot of stuff which um, it's, it's, it makes you get out of your comfort zone um, and do stuff like that, which uh, is necessity. But it, you feel like, I wish I didn't have to do it. But then we, you, since you don't have anyone to help you out, it's all you doing it. So um I mean, it's it's very it's very easy to classify you as a creative designer when there is so much of stuff that you have to keep doing. You know, it's a wide array of um, jobs yes, for yourself. Definitely, yeah. definitely, it is very difficult, and we have different styles, different tastes <laughs> in terms exactly. of creativity. But yeah, I'm just curious, do you plan on ever teaching this stuff to other people? Like teaching how to do it, maybe starting a community of other people who might be interested in quilling. You know, you are so talented. And I know a lot of people would be willing to maybe learn from you. Have you ever thought about that too? Um, I have thought about it. Um, and I have in the past done like really short sessions like uh, a couple of hours workshops. Uh, I recently had an online workshop, which happened last week. Um, but full time, not yet. Because, not yet. Um, <laughs> yeah, I so guess. So many client that. projects. Yeah, I mean, um, I don't know what it is. It's not that I hate it, but I, I have a, a ton of patience when it comes to paper and creating stuff for clients. 
But when it comes to teaching, I don't think I have so much patience. <laughs> I, I, I thought <laughs> you would I'm, say... When I'm older, maybe. Yeah, I thought you would <laughs> say, I have a lot of patience in paper and glue, but I don't have patience with people. <laughs> yes, I, I just didn't want to say that. Um, I think that's what it is. Thank you for saying it so easily. But that's what it is. Well, not yeah. everyone actually likes to teach. In my case, I like to teach. I like lettering until... I had my myofascial pain syndrome, so I cannot do lettering anymore. Because when I do, my my these one fourth side of the body up to the scapula of the left shoulder, it hurts so mu- so much. And then I oh. have a scoliosis that is curving to the right, so it's pulling the muscle and all of the fascia, including in it, included in it. So it is super oh. super painful. That's why I, I, I can totally relate to that. Yeah. That yeah. is why I stopped lettering. And then I know that I have a knack for teaching because every time we gather like our friends, <laughs> I will always be the one, oh, this is something that you need to do. Maybe this you are better off doing this instead of that. So I'm always the one putting a p- finger on something like, you know, uh-huh. this is not I, like I was live with my good friend Anna Sui uh, yesterday. Mm-hmm. And okay. I told her my superpower is actually telling people how they can make money from something. <laughs> like when I look into their <laughs> wow. business. That's when, a good power to have. <laughs> yeah. When I look into their business, I know exactly where they can make money from. So others, I know that they're not good at teaching. So I'll not force them to teach. But I would help them uh, maybe the, about client work or something like that. And then I'll point them in the right direction. That is my job. That has Mm -hmm. been my passion for a long time. It was very recently that I discovered that and Mm -hmm. actually turned it into a living. So now from being a lettering artist, I have become a creative business coach. That's how my career have evolved over the years. So people think that, oh, she was like this already and she's already gifted or something like that. No, I actually had a lot of jobs before. I was a wedding planner. (laughs) <laughs> I was Incredible. a blogger. I was a scrapbook designer, scrapbooker before I became a scrapbook designer. I tried calligraphy, surface pattern design and all those stuff. And then I discovered lettering and lettering led me here. So it's a whole oh, lot of journey. Yeah, exactly. And those different things that you did are, are so important yes. to, to help you reach where you are right now. You know, it's, They're all, it's part all of the those journey. different experiences which have brought this out in you. Which exactly. Is, wow, fantastic. Really. Exactly. You will not get it from just one thing. Sometimes that yes. one thing will lead to another. So if you think you like uh, something right now, probably you like calligraphy, do it because you like it. And then over time, you are going to discover, oh, I like something more. And then you're going to do that. And then over the years, it will change. Something will happen. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. And it the good thing about that is when it happens so organically, it is yes. more beneficial in the long term, you know. And very true. Yes. I mean, um, like even if you're pursuing a very different profession, which is not art related, um, like if you're pursuing a profession, which is maybe IT or in, or in computers, but you have this hobby and this passion for art or drawing or doodling or creating mandalas or something like that. I think they should do it. Like you should do it. Like you should find time to do it. Um, don't shut it out just because that's not your profession. Because mm-hmm. what you do in your free time for yourself and what you enjoy doing, I mean, that's so important in life. That me time which you have there in your putting out all your creativity and uh, putting your mind into doing something which is not giving you money, but it's giving you something more, which yes. is the pleasure of doing it. So funny I mean, you mentioned that. Example. Yes, funny you yeah. mentioned that because I I always tell whenever somebody asks me, so my, what do you think I should do? I always ask them one question: What is it that you would still want to do even if you don't get paid for it? Yeah, that's what you should do. Exactly, exactly. I mean, see the thing is, I mean, I'm drifting a little bit from our topic today, but when you ask someone like, so what do you do? What do you love doing? If you ask them this question, what they say is what they do as as a profession. But it's not necessarily that you would love your profession because I know a lot of people who don't love what they do as a regular job. 
they've forgotten what it is that gives them joy. So your profession is not the only thing in the world. You need to have your other passions as well. And because that's what is going to give you life. Mm -hmm. Even if it doesn't give you money. Because, okay, you're getting money doing something which is, okay, you don't love it that much. But those moments where you're pursuing something else, it could be just taking pictures or it could be just um, going for a run or something as as yeah. simple as, as that, like going to meet someone or, or, or anything, you know, that gives you joy. It's, it's very essential to do stuff like that. Um, if, or if it's like making a cake once a week, um, it could be anything. But yes. you need to do all those things to, to find um, passion in your regular job because that balance is so important to have. Yes, and, I, and people will always say, but I don't know what I should be doing. I need to find clarity. I need to be ready. And then I always <laughs> tell them, you know, clarity is in the action. You don't find it. Absolutely. It happens I mean, when you start taking you action. You can't keep thinking. The more you think, the more complicated it's going to be. I yes. mean, it has to be what is it that you enjoy doing? Um, because it's all about action, right? Like you said. It's not, I mean, of course, there is there is a thought process that goes into it, but that comes later. I think um, people um, don't really understand um, um, what to do these days, especially with the internet and with social media. They spend way too much time on the internet and social media, even like valuable time when you should be doing more stuff, which is um, going to add value to your life. Yes, right? and oftentimes they see others who are already there, you know, who are already successful, is making a lot of money. What they don't realize is that person could have taken a lot of years before they get there, like we both did. Yes. The, uh, the, the thing yes. that people see most in me is that I started lettering and I got my first job six months after. But what they did not uh -huh. know is... I have been in the online world since 2009 trying to figure out what it is that I need to do. I started with blogging, wedding planning, and then scrapbook design. I was doing scrapbook design for seven years before all of this mm -hmm. happened. I thought scrapbook design will be my full-time job for the mm -hmm. <laughs> rest of my life. Mm -hmm. But eventually, there's something better in store for me. And that only happened after my son was born. So see, uh -huh. all of the events in your life triggers something in either your career or your business, which is amazing. And you just have to learn how to embrace it and yes. recognize those signs. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And hopefully a lot more people will, you know, slow down a bit. I don't know if you're seeing that sign over there that I put. <laughs> it actually says, if you want to go fast go slow yes so i always 100%. I, I read that somewhere i don't know who to credit that <laughs> a phrase <laughs> but it really hit home hit me home and then i was like yeah maybe i was going too fast and i was trying too hard and then i'm blaming mm -hmm. myself if i make mistakes i am starting to compare myself with others maybe i need to slow down a little bit like step back for a while and look where you are already right now like you have been there so you might as well just push a little bit more a little bit further but more carefully this time plan things out enjoy the process enjoy the journey most of all and the scenery is pretty <laughs> so enjoy yes, so everything true. so true but um i mean that sense of clarity and the way you should go about things it doesn't come to you um, like like right away. It yes. takes you time. I mean, you need to have. I mean, I'm not saying failure is a must. <laughs> I mean, I don't. I hope there would be no such thing as failure. But sometimes failure is the thing that teaches you so much. Yeah. Um, it it teaches you about yourself, about life, about the world. Um, and then when you hit that bottom, and you realize what you could have done better. That's when you're going to make changes. Yes. Um, otherwise, I think it's very tough for you to, um, if everything is all rosy and every, if all the paths are clear out there for you, um, how is it that you're going to learn? So um, to kind of take things slow, <laughs> I think 
you need to have gone through a few hiccups. Yes, um, exactly. Which which are and of course you embrace them and you you look at it in the right spirit, you know, you don't let it bring you down. Totally. Yes. And my my good yeah. friend Karen Donaldson uh, told me in one of the interviews that I had with her, she said, "There's no such thing as f- failure, only learning. There's only learning." Yes. Absolutely. 100%. I mean, I don't know why that word is even there because failure is such a negative thing. Uh, even even the the word loser like yes you lost <laughs> yes. there's no such thing as lost um because it's very negative and it can affect a lot of people in a negative way um i mean it's i know it's not possible for everyone to win but then it's just the tag that people um latch on to which kind which kind of can bring you down you know Yes, it's more yeah. on what do you tell yourself. Mindset is a big part of everything. If you keep telling yourself, I'm not going to be able to do this, or a lot of many people who's better than this than me, then you will end up like not better. You will end up exactly yes. the way you describe yourself because you are telling yourself that and that's what you're feeding your actions as well. So everything that we tell ourselves, that's what comes out of us. So that's why we have to be careful what we say. (laughs) That's so true. Yeah, very true. Yes. Oh, my goodness. This has been such an amazing interview. And, you know, I wish I could keep you for a lot longer. (laughs) But I I didn't realize how the time has gone. Right. We have. I just looked at the time. and it's We're having a regular conversation, right? I mean, it doesn't feel like um a talk talk yes you know? it's, it's, it it's, doesn't feel like a, an interview at all and usually that's what i like about podcast interview looking more like talking more casually and opening up and talking about stuff that normally isn't being talked about on podcasts or shows whatever yes. because people are scared of what we might say <laughs> censoring yes, a little true. bit of stuff another thing is when you connect with someone who's also from a creative field because our passions are similar you can you can just get lost in the subject yes you know, exactly you have similar you have similar views and um, your thoughts are also along the same lines so we can just keep going deeper and deeper yes we have know? so much happens. thing in common <laughs> yeah and it's super fun and I know that uh, a lot of people might know where to find you yet, but like I said, for the benefit of those who don't know you yet, would you mind telling us where they can find you online, please? Um, online, you can find me on Instagram. My handle is Sabinu, S-A-B-E-E-N-U. I'm also on Facebook, Sabina Karanik. Um, otherwise, I do have a website. It's more like a Behance page. Um, if you are on Behance, you can just type Sabina Karnik, which I keep updating regularly. Um, that's about it. I post a few of my process videos on YouTube. You can find those as well. Yes. But, um, if you just go on Google and type Sabina Karnik, you can um, find my work or find ways to reach me and um, message me if you want any help or advice on paper art or any tips i can always help you out yes that would be awesome that would be awesome and you know what if you try and google sabina karnik there's a lot of stuff that's gonna come out so (laughs) try and do it yourself okay but don't worry if you didn't catch up on all those links they will be in the episode show notes you just have to head over to mindleon.com slash sabina and you will find everything you need well sabina i would like to thank you so much for um giving us your time today i know it's a busy day for projects because a lot of projects are coming in right now after a year of um, hiatus and so much stuff yes. that we have to deal with so thank you so so much thank you so much it was my pleasure to talk to you and to to just hear about you and your life and your work so i really enjoyed myself thank you thank you the pleasure is mine as well and if you like this episode leave us a review because every time you do you help the podcast get discovered by other creatives who need the inspiration to pursue their own creative dreams and as always keep creating and stay confident until next time this is mine